How's it going guys? TND coming back at you. So this week we got Deepstone Crypt as the weekly pinnacle raid, and this also being the first season of craftable weapons for that raid. Obviously that combination made this raid ripe for farming this week. If you watched my farming guide from earlier in the week, first let me make some clarifications for some of the info that I put in that video. First is that yes, the Tanix loot pool does cover every single possible armor and weapon in the raid, but only for the first clear of the week. That's my mistake. This, along with the fact that the final boss encounter only drops the machine gun and the sword, I would say for most teams, you're better off farming the second encounter of the raid, Atrax 1. That fight drops the sniper rifle succession as well as the shotgun heritage, probably two of the most sought after weapons overall in this raid. Also, assuming you burst the boss on one floor without using the airlocks, getting double chests in that encounter is a cakewalk as well. I ran this fight a bunch this week, so here is the inside scoop on how your team can clear this guy fast and efficiently. Let's head on up and do a little spacewalk. Firstly, if you're not familiar with this encounter or need a refresher, I do have guides for all of Deepstone Crypt. Check those out in the description below. The real secret sauce of this farm is almost entirely done with your team composition and loadouts. I would recommend at least three Curus of the Falling Star Thundercrash Titans with the rest of your team either on Nova Bomb or Blade Barrage. Burst weapons are very important here and you do have some options in that regard. Parasite is a solid option at times 20 Worms Hunger Stacks and Lament is so good in this encounter that the quest to get the sword was locked behind the day one clear of this raid. But the best weapon my team found was in fact Grand Overture, the season pass exotic machine gun from Season of the Risen. Its exotic perk says that landing hits with the slug launcher loads missiles, allowing for an alternate firing mode to launch those missiles full auto. Fun fact with the Atrax encounter is that immune shots count as hits for this gun, so building up times 20 missiles from shooting either data pads or immune bosses is fairly straightforward and consistent. What makes this gun so good now is that it recently got a buff at the beginning of the season which increased its missile damage by 50%. Multiply that by 20 missiles and what you get is a metric buttload of damage right in Atrax's face. Now a couple troubleshooting tips in this encounter because my team took a few runs to hit our groove to say the least. First is you want to get everyone upstairs in a timely manner. Having everyone group up around the boss before attacking goes a long way because the damage window can be so tight. Make sure to have a consistent call out pattern for damage as well. Are you going on one or are you going on go? Make sure the whole team knows this. Obviously your scanner needs to be on their A game with call outs since people getting there late is going to cause this to spiral out of control pretty fast. Make sure to double check that someone's picked up the buff too because yeah yeah, we forgot one time, so might as well pass that reminder right along as well. Group up for the final stand as well, and you're good to go. It might take a run or three, but once you get in a rhythm, you can start knocking out clears at a pretty consistent clip from what my experience shows. Now, you may be wondering why this video isn't over yet, and that's because, well, we, we gotta talk about these red border drop rates. Now, my team did about 30 clears over the course of two evenings, and I gotta say, these numbers aren't great. Even with the double chests, we were getting, I don't know, maybe one red border on the entire team per run. Run. Not great. So I did some digging to see if this was particularly bad RNG on our part, and what I found was actually even more depressing. Shout out to Chevy on Twitter for doing the dirty work here, as his team completed 50 runs with the challenge, resulting in 600 loot drops that could have been red borders. How many did they end up getting? 29 in total for a going rate of 4.8%. Chevy himself got three red border drops total in 50 runs. So with all this information in mind, yeah, you could go farm an encounter for like 12 hours and probably get all your patterns done. This is a looter game and I ain't here to tell you how and where to do your grinding. That being said, for the sake of sanity, I think the most efficient way to get the red borders in this raid is just have someone grab a Tannix CP every week, buy the free red border from the final chest. Yes, it's slower overall, but honestly, there's a lot of other stuff I'd rather be doing this season. Just take out Big Floaty here once a week and get on with your life. You'll have those weapons crafted in no time. So those are my thoughts on Deepstone Crypt weapon farming. I do have another farming video coming next week on the coveted Ikelos weapons. Since I know most of y'all want to get your hands on that SMG like yesterday. I got you. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to catch all of my latest Destiny content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy hunting, Guardians.